What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder. I'm Warren Thompson and the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 trailer just dropped and it was awesome. <laughs> Yes! And there is a lot to talk about with this trailer. I'm going to explain some things that you absolutely must know in order to understand what exactly is happening in this trailer. I also have a theory on what I think a huge plot point is going to be in this film that they're kind of alluding to in this trailer. So let's go ahead and dive right in. But if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest MCU videos. Now, the trailer starts off with Peter Quill's voice saying that they've been gone for a while. We see Star-Lord and we see that they have new Guardians of the Galaxy outfits. And these outfits are actually really in line with some of their comic book counterparts, specifically from the Annihilation storyline, the Legacy storyline, Realm of the Kings, and many, many more. And the suits do look pretty dang good. Now, you've probably noticed that the Guardians of the Galaxy are now in a new M ship. They are no longer in the Benatar. When the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special came out, we saw Mantis and Drax use this ship but we didn't know if this was going to be for good. It looks like it is for good. James Gunn, the director of the film, actually explained that the Benatar is still there. However, it is much smaller. So it looks like they just simply upgraded to a larger ship here. Now, Star-Lord says that the Guardians have been gone for a while, but no matter what happens next, the galaxy still needs its Guardians. Now, him saying that they've been gone for a while most likely is in reference to the snap. Remember, over half the Guardians team got snapped. Or if you're Gamora, you got directly killed by Thanos himself. So they were gone for that five-year time span where everybody was snapped, with the exception of Rocket and Nebula. So now they're back. Also keep in mind, this does take place after the events of Thor, Love, and Thunder. So they've been back for a little bit now, but it's most likely that they're going to address some things that happened immediately after Avengers Endgame. Thor will probably be in this movie just a little bit, even if they only just show them dropping him off and going their separate ways and going to all of the different distress signals across the galaxy. Now, we've also learned from the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special that the Guardians actually bought nowhere. So these uniforms and this new upgraded ship comes with new territory here. They're trying to look more official because they are now the owners and leaders of nowhere. They are turning around nowhere. It's not just this big outlaw city in the middle of space anymore, but the Guardians are trying to get it in shape to be a good place where many people can meet and trade and do good business with each other. We saw Star-Lord handling stuff like this multiple times throughout the holiday special. But here's where things get interesting with the Guardians of the Galaxy 3 trailer. The new ship and the Guardians land on a new planet. It looks a lot like Earth. However, the inhabitants of this planet that looks exactly like Earth are all humanoid animals. The Guardians walk out of their ship and say they come in peace. And then a little sweet girl who looks to be possibly an I.I., maybe a lemur, tries to be nice and offers them her ball in which Drax immediately picks up and plays dodgeball and chucks it right at her head. Now, this obviously leads everybody else to believe they do not come in peace and they start throwing rocks at them. So the Guardians of the Galaxy get off to a pretty rough start with these new people in this new world. Now, even though this planet looks a lot like Earth, it is very, very far from Earth and is actually ruled by the main villain of this film. And he is also the person responsible for creating Rocket Raccoon. And this person is the high evolutionary who they do show in this trailer. Now, a good majority of this film is going to focus on the origin of Rocket Raccoon and sort of ending his story. This is what James Gunn has already said that he set out to do with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, finishing Rocket's story. So the next scene, we briefly see Star-Lord with some upgraded headphones. You can see he's still listening to music as he always does, but he's got some upgraded gear. And then we hear Mantis say, don't forget where we came from. And then we instantly see a scene where a hand is reaching for a baby raccoon. This baby raccoon is Rocket. And this situation was most likely the high evolutionary grabbing Rocket to experiment on him. Remember in the very first Guardians of the Galaxy film when Rocket got drunk and he was yelling at Drax and the rest of the Guardians, he said, he didn't ask to get made. He didn't ask to get torn apart and get put back together over and over again, turned into some little monster. It's a very important scene that you need to remember. No one's laughing at you. He thinks I'm some stupid thing. He does. Well, I didn't ask to get made. I didn't ask to be torn apart and put back together over and over and turned into some, some little monster. So this scene right here directly ties into what exactly is happening in Guardians 3. Rocket was made into who he is by the person called the High Evolutionary, the person that we see in this trailer as the villain. 
The High Evolutionary was just a normal person. Herbert Edgar Wyndham was born in England, and he was a student at Oxford in the 1930s who was studying genetics and biology. He created a machine called the Genetic Accelerator in which he attempted to evolve rats. Eventually, an inhuman who was an outcast, the geneticist Fader, gave him some blueprints for cracking the genetic code. And from there, he was finally able to evolve his pet Dalmatian Dempsey into a humanoid life form with the intelligence of a chimpanzee. However, sadly, poachers came and they killed Dempsey. This is where he realized that his experiments and himself would never really be safe in the world, so he took all of his equipment and he moved to Wundagore Mountain. Now, Wundagore Mountain has a lot of serious implications not only in Marvel Comics, but also in the MCU as we visited Wundagore Mountain in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, where the Scarlet Witch went to, where the Darkhold was actually carved in stone, and some beings were there waiting to worship her. In the comics, this is where Herbert Edgar Wingham goes, and he develops a citadel of science, and he continues his experiments and has many more breakthroughs, and he's essentially able to turn his experiments into half-human, half-animal beings with very good intelligence. And he would go on to train his experiments in combat, and he called them the New Men, and they called him the High Evolutionary. Now, the story of the High Evolutionary and the New Man on Wundagore Mountain is pretty complex and very long, but essentially what you have to know for this trailer to understand what's happening in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is that the new men and the High Evolutionary got attacked a lot. This led to the High Evolutionary building a protective armor suit, the suit that he's known for in the comics and the suit that we see in this trailer. Eventually, he decided the world was too much of a confining place for him. So he turned the Citadel of Science into a spaceship, took all of his experiments with him, and he left. And they eventually landed on a planet and he created a counter Earth, a place just like Earth on the opposite side of the sun in which him and his experiments called the Newman inherited and inhabited. And this is what we are seeing in this trailer, this new planet that the Guardians go to where it has humanoid animal life forms, where in the background you can see that these homes and these streets and everything looks just like Earth. Now it seems like Rocket Raccoon escaped. He was experimented on, torn apart, put back together again until he was finally able to leave the clutches of the High Evolutionary. And it seems like he had been running from the High Evolutionary and possibly the Newman for a very long time, but in this trailer, we see him say he's done running. And right after he says he's done running, it shows us the High Evolutionary, implying that they are going to go after the High Evolutionary. Now, when he says that, in this scene, we can actually see in the background that a lot of stuff is on fire, it's in ruins, so it's safe to believe that he was attacked him and the Guardians by someone, most likely the High Evolutionary and the people who work for him, who I also do believe could be Aisha and the Sovereign, who is responsible for creating Adam Warlock, who we do see in this trailer, which we'll talk about in just a bit. Now, in the next few scenes, we actually see Gamora. Now, remember, this is not the same Gamora that the Guardians knew. Sadly, that Gamora is dead. Thanos did kill her to get the Soul Stone. However, 2014 Gamora came into our timeline and ran away. But of course, since Star-Lord was in love with her and the rest of the Guardians loved her as well, it seems like they all sought out to find her and did find her. Now, obviously, this Gamora does not have the same relationship with the Guardians that the other one did because she only met the Guardians in Avengers Endgame for like a very brief minute, but she knows that Nebula is her sister and she knows that the Guardians do care for her. So it looks like Gamora is going to try and help them, or possibly even seeking out the High Evolutionary for reasons of her own. But we do see her with the Guardians of the Galaxy. We actually see the Guardians in some type of prison, and it looks like Drax was actually shot and just kind of hurt. Gamora and Mantis are holding him up, Star-Lord is in the background, it looks like they are trying to escape. Now the High Evolutionary could have captured them and put them in this prison, and now they're trying to escape. We notice that we don't see Rocket raccoon in this. So he could have finally got to them, or the Guardians could have finally found him, and he could have captured them but is talking to Rocket Raccoon because Rocket is an escaped experiment. Now there also is one other component to this film. Like I just mentioned, the Sovereign and Adam Warlock. At the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 in the post credit scene, we saw that Aisha was creating a new life form, a new being, and she specifically created this being and its cocoon to kill the Guardians of the Galaxy, and she said she will call him 
Adam. This is Adam Warlock, who we do see in this trailer fighting Nebula, or at least they are trying to make us look like he is fighting Nebula. Now here's where I have a pretty big theory. We know that from the events of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, the Sovereign is after the Guardians. We know that they are all about evolution. We know that they actually don't birth humans anymore, they simply create them. The perfect example is Aisha creating Adam Warlock with this cocoon, and she said it's a new evolution for them. The Sovereign are all about perfection and evolution. That is exactly what the High Evolutionary is about out as well. So I do think it's possible that the Sovereign could actually be under the control of the High Evolutionary. He is all about evolution, he is all about perfecting humanoid beings, and that is exactly what the Sovereign is about as well, so it just makes sense. Plus, they mentioned in the post credit scene the Council wanted to meet with Aisha. The High Evolutionary could be in charge of the Council. We also have a scene in this trailer where the High Evolutionary is observing a woman running. Now she's running on something that kind of seems to be like a cat wheel or a hamster wheel. This kind of shows that the High Evolutionary does treat his experiments like animals. However, if we look at the woman who is running, she seems to be a human. Now, I do believe he created her, so I don't think she's an actual human, but this shows us that he is creating life forms that aren't part animal. He most likely started by creating these half animal, half human life forms, but then moved on to more human life forms, like the Sovereign, perhaps. So it is possible he could have created the Sovereign. This would tie the two stories together, the post credit scene from the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and Guardians of the Galaxy 3. That's how Adam Warlock could fit into the High Evolutionary storyline. Now also keep in mind that Adam Warlock is going to be a villain, but he's probably going to turn good, much like he does in the comics. In the comics, he is actually a great hero. He's actually one of my personal favorite heroes from the comics, so I'm assuming at some point in time in this film, most likely towards the end, he is going to somewhat become good and eventually go on to become a Guardian of the Galaxy himself. But now going back to the trailer, I'm gonna say from this part on, it gets sad. Before the trailer came out today, we had a pretty big feeling that some Guardians of the Galaxy were going to die. And then they give us this scene where Rocket Raccoon is lying on the floor and says, we'll all fly away together. One last time into the forever and beautiful sky. Now, when he says this, we can notice that while he's lying on the ground, on the ground is also pellets. So I'm assuming the High Evolutionary captures Rocket is super mad at him for leaving and has a big grudge against him and treats him just like a raccoon and throws him in a cage and puts pellets down there. This is somewhat of a torture for Rocket being treated like a raccoon, like an animal. And I'm assuming this scene is where a guardian or guardians find him. However, we do get a scene not too long after that of Star-Lord looking at somebody and crying, yelling no, and it looks like this person is hooked up to something as we see some tubes there as well. So whoever this is is most likely being experimented on by the High Evolutionary, and the odds are it is probably Rocket. However, it could be any of the Guardians. We also have another shot of Mantis crying as well, seemingly in a big, big panic. So sadly, I think some of the Guardians aren't going to make it out alive. I'm hoping they all do, but I don't think they are. However, let's not end on a sad note. There is something really, really happy that happens towards the end of this trailer, and that is Rocket embracing Lila. Lila is Rocket's girlfriend in the comics. Much like him, she is genetically enhanced, but is an otter. However, something truly cool is that this is not actually the first mention of Lila in the MCU. She was actually name dropped in the first Guardians of the Galaxy. When the Guardians of the Galaxy are captured and the Nova Corps are running criminal backgrounds on them, we can actually see the associated associates of Rocket Raccoon are Groot and Lila. This leads us to believe, especially with the way they embrace each other, that they have already been dating. And in the comics, they are the love of each other's lives. And it looks like they were probably both captured by the High Evolutionary at some point in time and were experimented on and genetically enhanced, which is how they're able to talk. So if this is about to be Rocket Raccoon's final moments, I am at least happy that he is going to be with Lila once again, one last time. But let's hope that Rocket survives. Now, in the final details of this trailer, we see Star-Lord jump at somebody, tackling them out the window, falling to the ground. This person is wearing all white, and as he jumps out the window, you can see another person in all white, dead on the floor, and in the scene where Star-Lord and Groot are shooting their way out of something, we can see other people wearing white on the ground as well. So, these people could be a new version of the High Evolutionary's new men. Instead of using half-humanoid, half-animal experiments, he is now simply using humanoid experiments to be his new men and his soldiers, essentially. And of course, we now have Swole Groot, and it looks like 
he knows how to use his body a little bit more as he's able to create two other arms, giving him four arms to have a pretty tactical advantage, being able to fire four weapons at once. And those are the important details that you need to know about the Guardians of the Galaxy official trailer. Be sure to let me know what you thought about this in the comments down below and let us know if you found any really cool Easter eggs. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more breakdowns and other awesome news videos related to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You can always follow us on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with live updates. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Wolf Wolf.